Hey guys, Hackexploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the web application penetration testing series. Alright, so I know I haven't uploaded in this series a while and that's because I was actually completing it and structuring it so that it covers everything to take you from obviously a beginner to an advanced. That being said, uh, in this video we're going to be looking at selecting our, web suite, our target in web suite, uh, adding it to, to our scope and then finally spidering it. Now I talked about spidering in theory. There's an entire video. I'll be linking that in the description or you can look at the card that's right at the top right now. Uh, so in that video, I uh, explained the theory and now we're going to be looking at it uh, in terms of practicality. Uh, now, uh, as my vulnerable operating system, I'm going to be using uh, the uh, Matilde, which comes pre-installed on Metasploitable 2. So uh, you should download, well, I would recommend that you download Metasploitable 2. It's a fantastic option for any of you who are just getting into penetration testing. It offers uh, multiple uh, vulnerable uh, web applications and vulnerable systems that you can practice with. So again, it's something that I really, really recommend. Uh, that being said, uh, as you can see, I have uh, the Metasploitable 2 virtual machine running and uh, I have already looked at my local IP address. You can do that by uh, typing in ifconfig that will display to you uh, the, your, your current uh, network interface and your local IP address uh, because we are doing this in our virtual penetration testing uh, lab. Uh, all right, so let's go back to Kali Linux now, and uh, I'm going to open up my browser. Make sure you get your IP. You get your IP address, and as I said again, we're going to be using Matilde. So if you don't know what Matilde is, Matilde is simply a vulnerable web application. And the reason I'm switching off, uh, I'm switching from the damn vulnerable web application, is because I want to show you a few. I really want to make it a bit diverse in terms of uh, the web applications that we use. All right, so uh, let's get started now. Now I already have the IP address of my virtual machine opened up here in my browser. As you can see, 192.168.1.104. So if I re reload this, you can see that it indeed is the Metasploitable 2 server. And uh, um, I can just go ahead and click on Motility. All right, now what uh, I should do now is go into my preferences. You can do that by uh, opening a new tab. Uh, so let me just open a new tab here, going into preferences and then selecting advanced and network and finally settings. And then you want to make sure you select a manual proxy configuration and then make sure it's using the localhost proxy, which is 127.0.0.1, a port 8080 and hit okay. Once that's done, we know that burp suite can intercept. Not that we want to do that in this video. We just want to, uh, we want to have a look uh, at, we want to map the web, the web application. All right, so we're not going to change anything uh, in Motilide, but I'm going to be showing you some uh, pretty interesting things in this video. So um, uh, now we should start up Burp Suite community. Now I'm going to be explaining something at the end of the video that is uh, really important, and it is in regards to the community version and the professional version of Burp Suite and what uh, what the differences are and uh, why you will need at some point to get the professional version. Okay, so uh, I'm going to select a temporary project. I'm using the community version as of right now. Hit next, use the burp defaults, and I'm going to start burp. All right, so it's going to start burp suite. And uh, let me just minimize the browser here. So give that a few seconds to start up. And once it starts up, uh, what you want to do immediately is turn off the proxy. We want to stop uh, in the intercepting uh, because we are not intercepting any uh, requests um, or we are not intercepting any responses. Uh, so go back into your target and uh, now we can get started with uh, with actually reloading the page right here. So let's reload that and uh, we should be able to see what's going on and we should have um, the site map. All right. So let me just open up uh, the burp suite here. Fantastic. All right. So now you can see something very interesting has happened here in our target and site map. We have uh, the files that were discovered here. Well, essentially, we have the web server that then has the Motilide folder, which is our target. Now, before I get into any of that, the sitemap will show you the current sitemap. Obviously, a sitemap is essentially, sorry about that, a site sitemap is essentially the structure uh, or the format of the web page and how the web page was constructed and how it will function uh, in regards to every other piece of content. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do or we'll be looking at is actually selecting our target, which in this case, again, is Motilide. And you can do that by right clicking and hitting add to scope. All right. So you might be asking, what exactly does scope mean? Well, a scope essentially allows us to define uh, our automated spidering. And what this means is we are focusing 
our only on our target. We're not going to focus on the reference links like you can see here. For example, we have Twitter as a reference link, Backtrack, uh, Dynamic Drive, Eclipse, etc., etc. You get the idea. So scoping is essentially selecting our target, isolating it so that we only see what we need to see. Uh, and the, obviously the results that we want to see. So I'm going to right click on Motility and I'm going to hit add to scope. All right. So now it's going to say you've added an item to, to the target scope. Do you want burp proxy to, to stop sending out scope items, out of scope items to the history of the other burp tools? Yes. Again, we want to make sure that we are, we clear out all the junk that we don't need. Now you might have noticed, well, uh, that's, essentially happened but nothing has uh, really changed and it, as you can see it's going to tell you here logging of out of scope proxy traffic is disabled don't worry about that just leave it as it is if you want to re-enable it you can go ahead but right now you don't need to do that okay so we've looked at how to add uh, our target to the scope now let's look at spidering as i mentioned in the theory video spidering is essentially uh, the, the the first and the most important step of web application penetration testing all right. It is, it deals with, or it is in, in, it is in relation with, uh, footprinting. And this is why I bring the comparison from penetration testing to obviously web application penetration testing. It is to deal, it essentially deals with crawling through the website and then it records all the files, the links and the met the methods that uh, it can get. And that helps us build an idea of how the web application is structured, how it works. And then finally we can learn how we can break through it. Okay. So I hope that explained it. But if you again, you're not uh, really clear on what spidering is, you can check out uh, the theory video. Uh, but for now, what we need to do is uh, we need to spider our target where well, we have added it to the scope, which is great. And now we need to spider it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to use spidering and this will help us identify all the links and the parameters that we need. Again, as I said, it's like footprinting. So what you want to do is right click on your target, which in this case is Motility and you want to hit spider this branch. All right. So I'm going to hit spider this branch. And now something interesting is going to start happening. As you can see, it's going to start getting all the links, all the resources that it can. And it's going to prompt you with here a submit form. Okay. Now, what you can do is just ignore the form. There'll be quite a few. Essentially, these are default login forms where it's asking you to enter credentials that you might want to enter. Let's say you, uh, you're performing white box penetration testing and you have the details. You can again log in like this and perform internal penetration tests. But we're going to assume that you, you do not know your penetration. You're essentially performing a, uh, your penetration test on the security. So I'm going to ignore all of these forms. Okay. And as you can see, there's another one right there and the spidering is probably continuing. Now, if you want to view the status of the spidering, you can go into spider. And as you can see, you have your status of the spidering. And, uh, once it's done, you will see that the requests made will stop changing and the bytes transferred, uh, will also stop changing. So we can, uh, stop the spider. Now you noticed something that we were faced with those, uh, form login prompts. Now you can choose to, to enter them as it, it prompts or, or as you are prompted. But the better way of doing this is to actually, you can actually do this uh, automatically and you can do this by going into spider and you want to go into options and you want to go into your application login. All right. Now, if you look at the form submission, uh, it is uh, it's, essentially what it's doing is it's going to use the default form submissions that you would find in a database. So for example, you have mail, first name, last name, surname, uh, name, address, you, you get the idea. So those are default values that one would, uh, one would be expected to find. Now we're looking at the application login. As you can see, uh, its option is set to prompt for guidance. We want to change this to automatically submit these credentials. Now in here, you can enter default credentials, or if you have an idea of what the, the credentials you might expect to find. Now, this is where creativity and uh, sheer information gathering comes into play. So if you knew the default, uh, you know, usernames and passwords, you can enter them here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a string that is, uh, well, I've used it before in uh, performing SQL injection and we'll talk about SQL injection because it is very advanced. If you know SQL injection or you have a, you have an idea or experience with the databases, you might understand what this string means. All right. So for my username, I'm going to change that to admin, uh, quotation mark and, uh, I'm going to say or one equal one. Uh, and uh, two dashes, all right, space and a dash. Now, you don't need to worry what this means for now. Please do not stress about this. I will explain it when the time is right, all right? So, uh, leave the password as it is and don't worry about that. Now, 
We, had, we don't need to change anything in, in terms of these tabs. We talked about these tabs in the theory section. And now we can go back into our control and target. And finally, we can spider the application again once more so that we can enter the, uh, we can as essentially process the strings that we, that we just entered in, in terms of the username. So I'm going to right click and spider this branch. Okay. So it's going to start spidering. And if we look at the spider, you can see that the, the spidering is complete and, uh, you can essentially clear the queues if you want to clear, clear them like so. And you can keep on running it depending on what you want to do. Okay. So I'm just going to pause it. And now we have essentially spidered the web application and you might be asking, well, Hmm, I've seen a few reference sites. That's not helping much. You know, we don't need twitter.com or, you know, sizzle.js. This might give us a basic idea of what types of uh, sites are linked to, to the web application. But in reality, you can see we have hackers.org, not, not very important information at all. Now, what if we click on the Mutilidae folder? Oh, look at that. That's really interesting. Now that is very, very important. What has happened here is it's given us the structure of the web application. This is vitally important. All right. Now, Again, as I'm saying, uh, you can look at how the website or the web application is structured. So in documentation, you can see, you can go ahead and read the documentation. You can look at the images that the website has, the styles. So you can inspect the entire site and understand what exactly is going on here or get an idea of what the person who developed the website was thinking. And then finally, out of experience or as we'll be looking at, uh, out of knowledge, you can actually uh, understand how to exploit a system. And that's where we'll be talking about uh, discovering hidden files, hidden files like admin pages, login pages, you know, that really juicy stuff. And uh, we'll be talking about that in the next video. And that's because uh, Burp Suite Community Edition does not support or have uh, allow you to use that feature. So what I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to be using Burp Suite Pro and I'll also show you an alternative program. I'm sure you, you, you've heard of it uh, that also works on Windows. Of course, Burp Suite works on Windows, but I'm not really a Windows fan when it comes down to penetration testing. Uh, so that being said, um, we have essentially spidered the application. We have the structure of the web application. And now we need to look at something also very interesting as we have already talked about it. Uh, let, let me just complete, uh, let, let me just show you how to get rid of all of these reference links and to essentially show the items in the scope only. So what you can do is just click on filter right here. This little bar here uh, is the filter bar. So click on it and it's going to show you, bring up this small little window and you want to focus on the filter by request type and make sure you check show only in scope items. This will essentially filter all the results to show you only uh, links, uh, resources or files that are within the scope. So once that's done, just click back on the filter. And as you can see, it has got rid of all the junk that you do not need whatsoever. And now you can essentially look at the uh, the requests and the responses and analyze them accurately uh, defined to your scope. And this will essentially, uh, it will stop confusing you. I've seen many beginners make this mistake where they don't define their scope. They do not know what their target is and they're getting links that, that are do not even relate to the website that they're, they're trying to perform the penetration test on. Now, since you know this knowledge, this will help you get a solid foundation. And uh, again, you can start logging out of scope, uh, out of scope proxy traffic when you want. Uh, again, that's very nice that they add that button right over there. All right. So now you only have uh, the files that you require or the files that you're currently performing the penetration test only. Now, I know this uh, this video was slightly it, uh, there was not a lot of action. But again, it is very important that you get this in the next video. We'll be looking at uh, how to how to discover hidden files or files in general that you are not supposed to find. OK, and that can be done by right clicking and going into engagement tools. As you can see, it is defined to the professional version of Burp Suite. And we will be going into discover content where I'll be explaining to you how to find things uh, like the login page or the configuration page. Some things that uh, web developers, you know, actually just uh, may try to hide them. But if uh, if actually found can really exploit the website or can lead to the exploitation of the website. OK. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. I know it was uh, a bit of theory mixed in with a bit of practicality. But again, uh, this is uh, I rarely see people being taught this. And this is one of those. It's one of a gem of video and I'm not really uh, tooting my own horn. I just want to make sure that you guys get uh, or understand the basics. 
Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video or you found value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section or on my social networks or on my website. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.